And I guess because if, I mean, a lot of companies that uh, I've seen don't really have very robust experimentation programs, but the idea here is that if you are running experimentation programs, that time to actually come up with the ideation, to design the experiments, to actually build them, to execute, to wait for the results, all that stuff takes a lot of time, a lot of money. And what you're kind of saying here is that a lot of people actually kind of start off making the same mistakes. So instead of starting off on first base where, yeah, you might have a nice idea, you can start off from a better position because you already know the types of experiments that have won with different companies. So why don't you start here? And then that gives you kind of huge leverage. That's kind of the principle, right? That's right. And it's shocking. And it's unfortunate that there are two things that people in our industry don't talk a lot about in the conversion rate optimization business, people who are really focused on growth. The two things that I'll talk about is exactly what you said. One, it takes a surprisingly long time to run an experiment. And the launching part is not the hard part. That's gotten easy. Thanks to Optimizely, thanks to Adobe, thanks to various other engines that make it easy to get experiments out the door. It's easier than ever. At least it's a lot easier than when I started running tests 20 years ago. The, <laughs> the problem now is that once you get a test out the door, which is not trivial, just to be clear, but it's not trivial. Once you get a test out the door, you now need to wait about a month to get enough traffic to that page, to that experience in order to get results. And so it's kind of shocking to people when they start to put the numbers together and say, wait, if I have to wait a month and I can't run tests in parallel, that means I get 12 shots a year to run it, to, to improve something. I get 12 tries, which is a surprisingly small number of tries in a year. And then the worst part, kind of the bad news on bad news, is that according to Optimizely, 80% of experiments that people run on their platform do not positively move the needle. So you have this challenge, which is to say, you know there's good things that happen when you can get these wins, but you have a very small number of tries you get a year, and 80% of them are not going to move from the needle. You're going to waste 80% of your time learning. And, and that's a really... Really rough game. Would you go to a casino that offered you those odds, Todd? <laughs> you know, would you sit down at a blackjack table where you're like you're going to lose eight out of uh, you know uh, eight out of ten? It hands? depends how many beers I'd had. Maybe if I'd had a few, but no, I probably right. wouldn't, well, take that, it, wouldn't take that. Wouldn't take that bet. <laughs> it, it depends on the beers, and two, it depends on how much you win when you do win. And so that's the whole goal is to make it so that because when you do win, those wins more than pay off for themselves, and they make a big, big difference. Yeah. But our point of view, like you were saying, is well. Everyone has that terrible hit rate because everyone recreates every losing experiment on their own. And it's sort of this thing that if you're not, you know, the experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. And I think learning is what you get when you don't get what you want, when you don't get the win. And so why not figure out ways of learning from other people to jumpstart your process and avoid wasting a month or two months or three of those months on uh, experiments that are just doomed from the start?